There we go. This example is quite detailed and takes you through drawing the isohyets or again the precipitation contours. This is not something that you will have to do in this class, so I'm going to quickly advance through all of these steps. So here we go. You can see all of the contour lines being drawn in. Again, I will give you a map with the contours already drawn in. Um, here they're just uh, discussing the proper method of drawing contours and correcting the contours, adjusting them so that they match the data. And here is the final isohyoidal map. The area between the contours of the isohyoids is what, uh, in this method, we are going to use to weight the precipitation data. And again, if I give you a problem like this, I will give you a map with the contours already drawn like this. And I'll also give you uh, the area that's in between the contours. So. For example, in terms of uh, what area you use to weight the data, here between the 7 and the 8 isohyet, the area is 40 kilometers squared, and we can take a look at that. All right, so these red numbers are the areas in between adjacent contour lines. So between 7 and 8, the area of that circle there is 40 square kilometers between the 7 centimeter contour and the 6 centimeter contour, the area of that circle is 54 square kilometers. So those are the areas that we're going to be using to weight the precipitation data in this method. In this method, the precipitation value that we use is the average of the two adjacent isohyets or contours. So for instance, for this 40 square kilometer area here between the 7 centimeter and 8 centimeter contour, the rainfall that we will use is 7.5 centimeters. Um, and again, the area we will use is 40 square kilometers. Now there can be some confusion about what to do with areas at the edges of the map that are not bounded by a contour. So for instance, at the top of this map, um, we have this area here that's 20 square kilometers. We know that it's bounded on the bottom by a 3 centimeter contour, but there's no contour bounding it on the top. We don't have a, a 2 centimeter contour line here. Different people handle this in different ways. You can either use 3 for your precipitation value, and you'll see that's what they did in this example. It also would be okay to choose to use 2.5 or 2.75. You'll get a slightly different answer depending on which number you choose, but either of those choices um, are, are, is, is acceptable. Okay. So now that we have um, our areas and we know how to get our precipitation, we simply calculate an area weighted average just like we did in the TSIN method. So here are their calculations. Um, now, in, in this example, they do the math in a little bit of a different order than in the uh, TSIN example that we just looked at. But it's actually the same exact thing as the TSIN example. Basically, they just uh, divided by the area first in the TSIN method. And in this example, they added all the area weighted precipitation values up and then divided by the area. And you get the same exact answer either way you do it. Um, so I encourage you 